Hello everybody, I'm Alex Rojas and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today is going to be about a very famous homework problem and it is that the owner of a business wants to advertise it by hanging outside a sign and the sign is going to be supported only by a rigid horizontal bar and a diagonal cable. Now the problem that this owner is having is that the, the cable that he or she purchased uh, was tested to a maximum tension, so that's a T-max equals to a thousand newton so he knows that the cable can withstand this amount of tension but he wants to pay attention to the geometrical arrangement to avoid surpassing this value and um, otherwise there is a risk to break the cable damage the sign and probably injure someone so there, there that's the the main key what should be the geometrical arrangement so that the maximum tension of the cable is is equals to at least equals to to this value is not greater than this and um, uh, this is actually a very realistic engineering problem um, most of the structures that we have in reality they are being tested all the components have been tested to uh, a specific maximum stress or maximum tension and it's the job of the engineers to avoid surpassing those values now well this is something that we know now uh, that the angle is what we're interested in, so that's our unknown. We also know he he goes and measures the mass of the of the sign that he's planning to put outside, and the mass of the sign is equals to 40 kilograms. And he also measured the mass of the bar that is going to to be supporting the the sign, and the mass of the bar is equals to uh, 10 kilograms. Now let's assume that the mass of the wire or the cable is negligible. So we're going to ignore this mass. It's just a nylon wire. It's really thin and it has it's pretty much massless. Now this is an equilibrium problem. That means that nothing is actually moving or rotating or accelerating. Everything is at rest. If that is the case, we know that one of the conditions for equilibrium is that the sum of all torques and I'll be saying a little bit about uh, more about torques torques are vectors the sum of all the torques acting of the, on the system is going to be equals to zero that means that there is no net torque and the definition of torque well the the formal vector definition is equals to the radius from uh, where you're going to be having the pivot or the point where everything is going to be with respect to what everything is rotating cross product uh, times the force and um, I'm sorry my handwriting now the one way to write this down is the the torque the magnitude of the torque or the magnitude of this vector is going to be equals to the, that same R or the, the arm where the from the pivot to the or fulcrum to where the force is applying times the perpendicular component of the force. Now this uh, uh, this quantity we need to introduce a sign and the convention is the following if the force is acting such is acting such that the object wants to rotate clockwise that means for example if you have a bar here that if you want to rotate it around this point so this is your fulcrum here and you put a uh, let's use colors here you put a force in this direction this object wants to rotate clockwise if that is the case the torque due to that force to the force F is going to be with a negative sign and the opposite is correct uh, well it applies if you have the pivot or the fulcrum here and you apply a force pointing up this object would like to rotate counterclockwise and the torque um, due to that force F oh this is the force F let's call it F prime so we know this is a different one is going to be positive well with this ingredient with the knowing that the sum of all torques is equal to zero knowing that we can define each individual torque the magnitude equals to the, the, the distance from this is the distant R that we're having here the distant R from the pivot to the, where the force is applied uh, the perpendicular component of the force and the sign 
that is uh, given by the rotation, the direction of the rotation that this object will have if only that force is applying, we will be able to solve this problem. So let's see how to do that. Okay, so again, we know that if the system is at equilibrium, we have that the sum of all torques is just equals to zero. That means the torque due to force one plus the torque due to force two plus the torque to the last force acting on the object, they just cancel with each other and it is equals to zero. This is the equilibrium condition and each individual torque, let's call this torque I, is either positive or negative. So this is the sign convention. It is positive if the force acting on the object is trying to induce a counterclockwise rotation and it is negative if the force acting on the object is trying to induce a clockwise rotation. This is the also known as the right hand rule times the radius or the distance from the point of rotation to where the force is applied times the perpendicular uh, component of that specific force. So these are the two ingredients that we need to analyze the system. That the sum of all torques is equal to zero and each individual torque from this equation is going to be determined using this equation. Now, let's pick a good object from this system. Every, syst every object of the system <clears throat> is actually at equilibrium. There is no motion, there's no acceleration. But for the torque analysis, the bar itself is a rigid body and it has a good point of, of rotation uh, right here. Let's say if the cable breaks, this bar is going to come down here and hit the wall so it's going to rotate in this direction therefore I'm going to pick the bar to do the torque analysis and my fulcrum or the pivot or the point of rotation is going to be right here next to the wall well let's do the free body diagram analysis to determine all the forces acting on the bar and from those forces acting on the bar I'm going to determine the, the distance of those forces to this point right here and from the clock wise or counterclockwise rotation uh, rule I'm going to assign the sign of each one uh, of these torques and then I do the sum well what are the forces acting on this bar the first one is its own weight uh, because this is this is a uniform bar is acting right here at the middle of the bar and we know that it is equals to the mass of the bar times gravity which is 10 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared this is 100 newtons so we know that the weight of the bar is 100 newtons the second obvious one is the weight due to the sign the sign itself is acting on the at this location on the bar trying to pull it down and uh, the weight here is going to be mass of the sign times gravity which is equals to 40 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared and that is going to be equals to 400 newtons and uh, there is another uh, force that is the tension here acting along the the line of the cable that is uh, T max we're analyzing this problem for a extreme case where uh, the the geometrical or this angle is such that the tension on the on the cable is the maximum tension which is a thousand newton now there is another force that usually is ignored and it's okay if you ignore it or neglect it but uh, let's to to be you know uh, trying to analyze uh, the, the system uh, you, we have to introduce a, a normal or reactive force from the wall against the bar let's call that FW and this force is actually there because the bar is not punching through the wall it's not going through the wall therefore there must be something avoiding that and that is the normal force from the wall against the bar all right so we have all the forces and we see why it is okay to neglect this force because this force is acting on top of the rotation point that means that r is zero right there so we know that that's gonna it's not gonna play any role so let's assume or let's see what is the sum of all torques well the sum of all torques is we have the torque due to the mass of the or the weight of the bar plus the torque due to the weight of the sign plus the torque due to the maximum tension 
plus the torque due to this uh, FW uh, that we know that we now know that it is equal to zero because the R for that force is just zero and this is the total is equal to zero well the force or the torque due to the weight well is it positive or negative well let's assume that we are not having any of the other forces just this force right here this force if it is acting on the bar it will make it to rotate a, a clockwise rotation that means that the torque is negative so we have the sign right there is negative and it is equals to the the where what is the distance between the point of rotation and where the force is applied or well, here is the point of rotation here is where the force is applied so it is right halfway through the entire length of the rod and let's call that the that length is just l half so l one half one thing here is that the problem is not giving us what is the length of the rod that means that it's not a it should cancel somehow it is it's not relevant so we just use our general uh, term l and then we will find a way to cancel it if we cannot it is either a problem of the enunciation of the problem or we're doing something wrong so that's a way to determine if everything is making sense but okay the distance is l half and the force the perpendicular component of that weight is well the weight itself is already perpendicular to the horizontal so it is the total magnitude of the weight which is a hundred newtons so that's a hundred newtons right there now for the weight of the sign is the same idea it is pointing down it is trying to induce this clockwise rot clockwise rotation that means it's negative the distance from the pivot to where the force is applied is equals to l it's not l half in this case is l and um, the force the perpendicular component is just the entire weight 400 newtons also the now it is the the oops i don't know if it is positive or negative yet let's see what is the torque due to the tension well the tension is pointing in the opposite direction and and if you look let's neglect all the other forces and just focus on the on the the direction of the this force the tension it is trying to induce a positive rotation to the bar that means that uh, it is a counterclockwise rotation therefore it's a positive torque and it is at the same distance l and the perpendicular component it is let me do it in a different color is right here this is the perpendicular component right here and it is due to the sine of the angle so it is equals to t max sine of theta and this is just equals to zero okay from here we see that l is a common factor everywhere and on an equation that is equals to zero that means that they cancel so it's good that this is, there is no dependence on l because it's not given in the problem and um, and then we're having here that this is just equals to 50 newtons minus 400 this is 350 newtons oh sorry 450 newtons uh, negative 450 newtons plus t max which is a thousand newtons by the way it's a thousand newtons times sine of the angle that is equals to zero and therefore the angle itself is just the arc sine of 450 divided by a thousand which is this is approximately one half so we can say that the angle is around 30 degrees now if the angle is smaller than 30 degrees let's say this angle is 20 degrees or 10 degrees it means that it will require a higher tension to balance the other two forces so the owner of the business doesn't want a smaller angle it wants to maximize this angle and 
approximately 30 degrees or the arc sine of 450 divided by a thousand is the minimum angle uh, that he can uh, achieve or he can uh, set up his geometry in order to avoid uh, surpassing this maximum tension. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. And if you have more questions or uh, other problems that you want to suggest, please just drop me a line. Thank you. Bye.